Animal Planet's Jeff Corwin visits FSC for convocation. CDC officials try to curb the U.S. measles outbreak. And how is Lakeland doing its part to fight child poverty? All this and more on FSC Today. Good afternoon and welcome to FSC Today. I'm Olivia DeArmond. Our weekly newscast will keep you updated on the latest news, sports, and entertainment. Diana Nyad recently made headlines by becoming the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida without a shark cage. Go Healthy FSC reporter Maggie Sutton shares how the Wellness Center can help students reach their swimming goals. Hello and welcome to Go Healthy FSC. I'm Maggie Sutton. We'll keep you updated on fitness tips, healthy eating, and college life. With temperatures in the mid to high 80s, September in Florida means swimsuit season is far from over. The Wellness Center has a new program that can help students become stronger swimmers. For students, a swim in the pool can be a welcome escape from the Florida heat as well as a low impact workout. The great thing about swimming is you're using your full body. So whereas running, you know, you're really focusing on your legs, your core, but you're not really using your upper body. Um, with swimming, you're using your upper body, your lower body, you're using your arms and your legs. You're also engaging your core and your back. It's really easy on your joints because you're not pounding the pavement or anything, so it's not painful. Aquatics coordinator Maggie Cattell says that practice is the key to building your endurance and becoming a stronger swimmer. Endurance is the hardest thing about swimming. Um, when, as opposed to weightlifting or playing basketball or running, you're able to breathe all the time. Swimming, your face is in the water, um, so there's a lot of breath control. Cattell says that even seasoned swimmers can benefit from the free swim lessons offered at the Wellness Center. People our age who are looking to swim, they're normally looking for something that's goal oriented. Whether that's they have a fear of water, they're looking to lose weight, they want to be given exercises that they can use in the future, um, or you know they are training for a triathlon. There's normally some type of goal happening. It's not, oh, you know, my mom wants me to know how to swim anymore. Boone says that students should take advantage of the free swim lessons because it's important to have someone observe the swimmer and give feedback. You have to have people who can watch you, especially when you're first learning how to swim and you're getting better. You really need people who can watch you and tell you what to improve and how to improve it. To sign up for free swim lessons, visit the Hollis Wellness Center front desk. Well, that's it for today's show. I'm Maggie Sutton. Like us on Facebook and stay healthy, FSC. Swimming lessons are offered throughout the academic year. Instructors are limited, so sign up early. A special guest speaker has finally made his debut at Florida Southern College. Earlier this morning, animal enthusiast Jeff Corwin kicked off FSC's first convocation of the year. Most students remember Corwin from his days on the Disney Channel and most recently on Animal Planet's Ocean Mysteries. If you missed his performance or would like to see the star close up, he will be in the Branscombe Auditorium this afternoon from 2 to 3.30 for a meet and greet. Several of FSC's Greek organizations are hosting annual pre-recruitment events, including cookouts, photo parties, and garden socials. These functions give potential new members an opportunity to get to know Greek organizations before recruitment begins. We are currently in the midst of Men's Recruitment Week, but there's still time to sign up for Women's, which starts Tuesday, September 24th. The comedic singing duo Carly and Donnie are back on the road after successful performance here at Florida Southern College. After meeting in Los Angeles, the two began touring the United States, singing about life experiences with a humorous twist. Their next stop on tour is the University of Arkansas. Tomorrow, Florida Southern will host an MBA info session. These meetings allow students to learn more about the school's unique MBA program. Admissions counselors will also be at the event to answer questions about financial aid, requirements, and campus resources. To RSVP, visit Florida Southern's website, and the presentation begins at 6 p.m. Events around campus have been in full swing, and our sports teams are no exception. Let's check in with Victoria Guerin for our Mox Athletics. Hello 
Mock fans, and welcome to another edition of Southern Sports. I'm Victoria Guerin. Let's get you caught up on the past week in Florida Southern Athletics. Men's and women's cross country competed in the Mountain Dew Invitational on Saturday. The men finished second of 15 teams, while the women came in eighth out of 11. Our volleyball team played in the Colorado Premier Challenge this past weekend. The Lady Mocs fell in their first two games on Friday against Concordia St. Paul and Truman State. Saturday, they answered back with two wins against Metro State and West Texas A&M. <music> Women's tennis began their season at Embry-Riddle this past weekend. The Lady Mox won two single matches and only fell in one in the gold flight division. After a rough 4-0 loss to Embry-Riddle, the men's soccer team looked to rebound against St. Leo. Freshman Jonathan Radvogan gave the Mox an early 1-0 lead in the first half. St. Leo scored two goals in the second half to win the game 2-1. The women's soccer team was also looking for their first win of the season at home against West Florida. The Mox were able to keep West Florida out of the net, and due to weather, the game was called with two minutes left and resulted in a 0-0 tie. Be sure to go out and support all of your Moxon athletic teams and follow us on Twitter at FSC Sports. For Southern Sports, I'm Victoria Guerin. In local news, many programs against child hunger are back in action. Polk County's large poverty rate is being combated by this year's Kids Packs program in Lakeland. The program provides enough food to feed 2,000 children at 55 schools. These foods include cereal, canned meals, fruits, vegetables, and milk. To learn how you can help with this program, call 1-800-598-7871. This weekend, families will have the opportunity to explore art through a variety of hands-on activities and projects. On Saturday, the Polk Museum of Art will host Family Day. Festivities include games, balloon bending, face painting, and live entertainment. The event runs from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Admission is free. Though our weather here in Lakeland is often stormy, the rains in Colorado are a force to be reckoned with. The torrential downpours have caused massive flooding, leaving five people dead and 500 still missing. FEMA is taking action and bringing the search and rescue teams to aid in the efforts of local authorities. 2013 is on pace to becoming the worst year for the measles in more than a decade. According to the CDC, there were 159 cases of measles from January 1st to August 24th. Measles was thought to be contained in the United States, but there have been a large number of visitors from countries where the disease is common. Younger physicians in the U.S. are not quick to recognize the signs of measles, having never seen it before. Doctors say if the illness is not caught and treated quickly, the outbreak could continue. Now let's check in with Dion Spires with this week's Entertainment Rewind. Welcome to another installment of Entertainment Rewind, where we bring you up to date on all things entertainment, both locally and in the world of Hollywood. I'm Dion Spires. We all saw a very public downfall for former Food Network star Paula Deen just months ago, but it seems that she may be regaining the respect from her fans. Back in June, Dean lost many partnerships as well as her hit Food Network television show following the surfacing of controversial remarks. Just this weekend, on September 14th, she made her first public appearance since then at a cooking expo in Houston, Texas, where she was given a standing ovation by attendees. MSN.com reports that the ovation was minutes long and left Dean fighting back tears of joy. She seems to be in good spirits now. Prior to her appearance in Texas, Dean told TMZ.com that she does not need a comeback because she never went anywhere. From a warm welcome to a rude awakening, Katy Perry has joined the ranks of many celebrities under fire with PETA following the release of her music video for her new single, Roar. The video, shot with a jungle theme, has been deemed cruel to animals by the activist group. This does not come as a surprise to some, seeing that PETA has been protesting the use of animal actors for some time now, claiming that they suffer from extreme confinement and violent ways of training. To add to the matter, PETA also told sources that the animal providers used by Perry's team in the video, the Serengeti Ranch, is a provider that has been under close watch since 2001 for animal cruelty. All publicity may be good publicity, and with an album coming out next month, Perry can definitely use it, but unfortunately, time has shown that a fight with PETA does not always end in a victory. That's what's going on in Hollywood this week. Tune in next week to see it all unfold again. Back to you, Olivia. Thanks for joining us on FSC today. Be sure to tune in next week for the latest here at FSC and the community. Have a great day.